Welcome to a Classifies webinar on Fontiva Upgrades Checklist. I'm Vinu Deschetti, Director of Marketing Sales here at Aplusify. It's a pleasure to bring you highly informative and educational content that is tailored for associations and nonprofits. We love to share what we know and have learned, as well as learn a little something from you along the way. Today, we have Rajiv Gupta as our guest speaker. Rajiv is our Fontiva expert. You have a lot to hear from him today. He's an experienced Salesforce developer and leads our Fontiva internal task force. Rajiv also, along with his team, ensures that clients get to maximize their Salesforce investment by utilizing lessons learned and implementing best industry practices to meet complex business needs. Okay, today's webinar, we've got a lot of good information for you. Um, we're going to go over three different areas here. Issues that can pop up when you upgrade, so something that you might want to, to be wary of. Uh, the second one is our um, upgrade checklist that we actually use for all of our Fontiva customers, making sure that the upgrade goes as smooth as can be and making sure that we just dot our I's and cross our T's. And then mistakes that Rajiv is going to go over that he thinks that might be avoided if you just know a little bit about them. So um, Rajiv, thank you very much for taking the time today. I know that um, that we have a lot to talk about um, with the upgrades. But before we begin, before I let you start, I'm going to launch a poll just so that we can learn a little bit more about um, who we have with us today. But while they take the poll, I'm going to go ahead and let you get started. Thank you, Vino. Um, it, this information that I'm going to share with you all is on the basis of our learning supporting 25 plus uh, Fontiva clients, um, we we have seen different uh, organizations upgrading in a different manner. But what the, this checklist is, what we have learned is generally uh, suitable for all the Fontiva clients that we have. Uh, different scenarios uh, are possible for different uh, use cases however the checklist will be generic enough if you need the checklist uh, please do let us know you will be able to follow it through very easily as we go along and on the screen here we just have um have listed a few things that we um that with the Fontiva upgrade that uh, the last upgrade release update that they had that you sh the benefits that you'll see. Now we won't cover all of these today because some of these are just uh, additional new features that are nice to have um, and are easy to just kind of turn on. But today we really wanted to focus in on the areas that you may be a little bit more hesitant about, which are the very first two, the combining of invoice and sales uh, sales order objects in 3D Secure 2.0. And Rajiv will go through those today. Um, and while I am going through uh, the, the webinar, my request will be if you could all ask questions as soon as you have them, I will try to cover them during the discussion because it's going to be easier um, and maybe relevant to all the participants. Um, and one of the re important reason, business reason, that uh, is not on the slides, if you talk to Fontiva, there is an upcoming release in 2021 that will uh, be a limited release, but for pre preparing for that release, you need to have a Spring 20 release set up properly. And that's where Fontiva is releasing Fontiva payments. And it's my understanding due to the due to pandemic uh, that could save a lot of transaction costs for many of their clients because they are using the economy of a scale model to bundle the transactions uh, processing cost as well as uh, some of our clients who are collecting recurring payments um, it is a common industry problem if the credit card changes how do you uh, utilize and get the updated credit card from MasterCard or Visa or Discover automatically without having to trouble the client? And Fontiva Payments 
API enables that feature. So if you are a recurring, um, you are an organization collecting recurring payment, it will be a very good investment with uh, Fontiva payments. Um, we we know uh, the the this uh, polling is screen. Are we good with polling? We are. Let me um, kind of share the results with everyone so that everyone can see kind of where you are. You're not alone. You know, there's always never enough hours in the day and um, technical know-how. Sometimes um, you know, technology is an evolving beast and we're all learning as we go along. Um, we happen to have developers that we invest their time in, in training them, making sure that they're updated on the latest. Um, and then um, something that if you're afraid that upgrades will break something that's not broken, that's an absolutely um, rightful fear to have. Um, and that's part of what Raji will talk about today is kind of making sure that you're uh, watching out for any fixes that you put in and watching what might happen um, as, a, as an effect of those fixes. Um, and budget, I know, budget, budget, budget. Wish we all had a money tree. Ask Santa this year for that money tree. Um, and then definitely today, we wanna make sure that you leave with, um, you know, a, a checklist of what you need to do. Um, and obviously those, the checklist is generic. Um, we're happy to, after the webinar, if you need to have more questions or want to have a specific conversation about your specific instance, we're happy to do that. Thank you, Vinu. Uh, one of the basic question, and it may not be relevant to many of you, but we keep hearing from our clients the, that am I releasing or am I upgrading for Salesforce release or Fontiva release. So this uh, slide gives you some historical perspective on what we are talking about. Every year, Salesforce consistently for last five, seven years that I have been following, they release Salesforce in addition to routine security patches. And it is uh, generally advisable to increase uh, productivity by upgrading to Salesforce latest version, especially when it is uh, related to security. Otherwise you risk the data and uh, you risk your org uh, automatically. We, we know, could we go I'm back? Sorry to, about uh, that. Um, on the right side, you would see Fontiva release. Um, so you, you see somewhere in uh, 2019, there were two Fontiva releases, 2018 R1, 2018 R2, and then only one release, uh, 2019 R1 in 2019. And they, this year, earlier this year, there was a Fontiva 20 spring. So which is a, a slightly change in convention. So what we are talking about today is relevant to upgrade of Fontiva releases. There, there is a, uh, I'm sure separate discussion needs to happen on Salesforce upgrade path and patch that you would all need to, um, to do in your orgs at a time convenient to you. Um, so when we are talking about release and upgrade, what does that really mean um, is where uh, this webinar will be useful. Every time a software is upgraded, um, you, you and I may never notice when, uh, when say when we are using Office 365 or Office simple Microsoft Word or Excel document, the software gets up, upgraded, but nothing seriously happens. Our documents continue to work. Uh, we continue to. Um, uh, work in Excel if we were doing, uh, there is a uh, potential a uh, upgrade that Excel formats that uh, Office will ask for. However, in complex enterprise solutions such as Fontiva, it is natural that data schema underneath uh, that supports the functionality in the uh, software also changes whereby developers, in this case Fontiva, 
deprecate some fields and objects and introduce new fields and objects. Um, it is also important to notice when Fontiva or any other implementation partner or your own team has implemented Fontiva in addition to the data schema that Fontiva is base package generally called managed package within Salesforce terms and Salesforce standard objects. Um, in addition to that, you must have introduced other customization, other custom objects, new fields, new process flows, new workflows, new Apex classes for integrating with third party apps. Some organizations have integrated with learning management system. You may have another reporting uh, tool set up. So in a complex uh, system such as Fontiva, um, there are always uh, importance given to the schema, what it was and what it will be um, after the upgrade. Uh, so, uh, next slide, we know. Th this is a comprehensive summary. I, I do not want to replicate what's available on the web, but um, when you think about new fields and new objects and deprecated fields, between 2018 and 2019, there was a significant change that Fontiva introduced by simplifying how the dates were uh, stored. So there was an introduction of term object uh, between those versions that you can see. And there are many other fields introduced. Um, between 19 and 20, uh, next slides, please. And I, I'm not going to go through all these fields. If you don't find it, I can send you the online link to you all. But between 19 and 20, uh, Fontiva changed changed for a betterment of uh, the experience, how the invoices were handled. Uh, prior to 20 spring release, invoices were uh, ma managed through a separate object while in the current version, it has been simplified under sales order itself. It is a stage of sales order. So, and these are some major objects and functionalities that impact all of you and maybe some of you. Um, so depending on where you are at within your uh, Salesforce and Fontiva journey, di different objects and different schema will impact and that becomes the basis of our analysis on what will it take for you to uh, upgrade. Um, and with that uh, background, uh, let me walk you through with the checklist that might help you uh, finalize your upgrade path. So prior to upgrade, uh, we suggest that you make the uh, inventory of all your customization, your process builder, um, you analyze your reports and your org against new fields and deprecated object fields. And why it is important to think about deprecated fields and objects as well, because they continue to contain some data if you were using those fields and you will have to either through Fontiva scripts or uh, otherwise writing batch processes move that data over to the corresponding new fields or maintain them in your custom fields if that data was relevant to them and there's no path that Fontiva data schema provides for. That's where uh, you will have to do analysis. And with that uh, uh, analysis, you will also find um, reports and data interfaces, your exports to uh, your accounting system, all that could be uh, impacted. But how do you evaluate that is where analysis will go in. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say you were importing, you, uh, you are pending invoices to your uh, accounting system. That report will no longer pull data from the same reporting uh, engine. It will need to pull data from uh, a different object underneath uh, within the Salesforce and all the historical data for invoice will need to be moved over 
as sales order. So some processing will need to do. Um, and there, the, a, a, this a similar example will be valid for all the new fields and all the deprecated fields. Somebody has to evaluate your reports and all the interfaces so that you're not surprised uh, when the upgrade is done. Um, the integration analysis is generally forgotten. So if you had a simple single sign-on integration, generally it is going to uh, not be impacted. You will see if your users are uh, given a single sign-on for your learning management system or for your website or for your uh, uh, advocacy software or for your marketing automation, they will continue to work uh, with these upgrades. However, the problem becomes crucial if you are bringing uh, analytics data in Salesforce or you are uh, exporting or sending some more data to other systems. At that point, it is likely, uh, may not be true, uh, some of this data may be f uh, flowing through interfaces which may no longer work after the upgrade. So that analysis is bullet point number four um, that you would need to cross off. Does is is that relevant to you? Does that mean you would need to do additional uh, ch checking or uh, testing based on this information? And finally, uh, before you embark on upgrading, it is always a good idea to create test cases. Um, you would not want to uh, leave your members and customers to tell you which scenarios do not work. And it is a good, practice to maintain uh, test scenarios that your membership team or your accounting team and your marketing team, all of them collaborate to put together scenarios which are important from their job function perspective. For example, you, are, uh, you might have 10 different types of members or you might have 30 different types of events. Uh, uh, create those scenarios that somebody can test through them one by one. It is tedious, it is time consuming, but uh, save some embarrassment uh, if you don't hear that and fix that internally uh, within the technology team or membership team. So th that's uh, the, the discussion about uh, what you need to do prior to upgrading. And that uh, time is part of the planning also determines when should you upgrade is that a time window where you are going through renewals and you do not want to impact the upgrade. Would you like to have some sort of uh, uh, date uh, agreed upon between the stakeholders and leadership uh, when the upgrade will happen? Um, during upgrade, uh, we have also noticed one of the question always comes, should we continue to fix issues as well? and create new uh, functionalities. Um, very large organizations generally uh, do not freeze code or support requests for more than two, three days, otherwise business impact. So it is a question of, um, do you have sufficient capital to keep doing it? The reason being, there will be a period of time where um, those changes will need to be moved over to new org because for such an upgrade, you will have to maintain a sandbox that is on a Spring 20. You will also have to maintain a sandbox on your previous version if you do not do code freeze. If you do code freeze, then it is a good idea just to not worry about uh, enhancing software. Any critical issues, of course, you will have to take care of them on production and then uh, make sure those patches and issues are fixed on sandbox as well. Um, the, the second item is, do you need a partial sandbox or do you need a full sandbox for an upgrade of this sort? This is a question entirely dri uh, is driven on your level of customization. So let's say if you are an organization, you have a lot of different uh, workflows and uh, process builder and data schema changes in place, then 
the scenarios will also be data driven so partial sandbox is the one where you do not have sufficient data for testing and you your testing will be incomplete uh, in incomplete set of data so the choice between you use full sandbox versus partial is really organization driven partial sandbox are less expensive full sandbox are not inexpensive they are pretty expensive so there must be a reason why you have a full sandbox um, and uh, it's not necessary to cut, cut that cost if you your data and your customization and your organization needs determine and uh, require that to be available the third uh, bullet point within your um, upgrade path is transformation of data uh, to the new data schema. So let, let's uh, think about this for a minute. So what we are talking about in transformation is going back to the previous slides. We talked about, um, and let me take an example of invoice object, which may, might impact from 2019 to spring 20 release. During the uh, period when you are upgrading, um, you will you will have two options. Either you manually run scripts and transform data in sandbox. However, uh, let's say that period of upgrade is four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, depending on your level of customization. Transactions will continue to happen in your production system, uh, environment. Yeah, people will be purchasing membership, there will be changes to the contacts, et cetera. So this transformation of data from old schema to new schema has to happen automatically um, so that you prepare those scripts and run those scripts on the day of upgrade. Let's say um, you decide on Saturday, January 9th, you need to upgrade. At that time, you will uh, provide a window of downtime to the system, run your script, update the data using the script so that all the transactions which have happened since you started working on such uh, upgrade also are upgraded at the same time. And those scripts uh, should be run in, uh, in full sandbox by after refreshing sandbox with the scripts uh, so that you can upgrade uh, the latest data. Developers should test, but that doesn't uh, and shouldn't uh, alleviate the need uh, for user acceptance testing. And it, it's not a bad practice to uh, ensure that there's time allocated with membership team and finance team so that they can uh, test the system on full sandbox prior to going live um, with the upgrade and they can uh, test their reports. They can test if the membership types are correctly uh, processing uh, transactions, you are able to collect money. And if not, you do not have bandwidth to run through all the testing, there, there's definitely something uh, in the industry called critical testing or critical use case testing or smoke testing, different names are available. But what that really means are any scenarios which are revenue impacting um, must be tested both on full sandbox as well as right after going live so that your members, customers, your partners can continue to uh, transact. Reporting issues can wait because data is already in the system and you can make changes to the reports. And once you fix the report, data will start to flow in. Data going in, if you do not test and fix correctly, uh, then you will lose data. But reporting and in, in other interfaces can, you, you, you you can, there's no need for assuming that you shouldn't fix, but what if you didn't fix? What if the one report is not working on the day uh, you went live? It's still, there will be data and you can fix it next day. Um, so that is the uh, discussion around what is user acceptance testing. So let me take a pause here. Any questions you all have so far? 
Yeah, Rajiv, we actually do have a question. Um, this is uh, in regards to the invoices um, with the upgrade. Now, if someone has a custom invoice with a third party, this specific case is about Conga. Um, is that not, how is the, how's the upgrade affect a third party app like that with, especially when it deals with the custom invoices? Um, if you are sending your invoices through Conga, you will have to change the Conga interface to pull um, data from uh, sales order as opposed to invoice because invoice current conga implementation and integration must be pulling uh, the invoice relevant data from uh, the invoice object which will no longer contain data uh, after the upgrade to spring 20 so you will have to uh, carefully do two things one historical invoice data must be uh, moved over to sales order that is what uh, different points I mentioned, uh, data transformation. And two, going forward, uh, you will have to move the new uh, interfaces in Conga to pull uh, correct fields from sales order. It's not that difficult. It just has to be done carefully by somebody who understand the, the interface and uh, data transformation from historical data to uh, new data. Now, Rajiv, I know Fontiva helps a lot of um, the customers through their premier service support in terms of with getting them upgraded. Now, when it comes to something like this with um, dealing with something like Conga uh, in a third party app, is that something Fontiva can help with? Um, that I, I think is a good question to ask Fontiva. I, I don't want to talk about uh, what Fontiva sh could offer, but um, let me uh, le let me try to um, try to show a working uh, example on uh, the the upgrade checklist in the the overall in a different view of the same uh, same checklist that you have shown. Uh, uh, Vino, can I? Can you show me, uh, give me the screen, please? Sure. Actually, you should be, oh, I just need to stop. There we go. Okay. So I, the same checklist I have put together in a different view in Excel sheet. So what you will, uh, uh, you, what, what I have seen generally, generally, uh, when uh, everybody is estimating, they estimate only the Fontiva software upgrade, uh, the highlighted portion. And it is most of the consulting companies when they are upgrading, uh, they will say exclude any data transformation or data issues. So once you exclude uh, any data issues, you excluded uh, anything around data transformation, you excluded anything about the reports right away because reports are related to data. So two big line items are not budgeted when you budget for your um, uh, upgrade. It is also, uh, I have seen exclusions in some of the uh, clients we started working on at different times and their uh, their previous developer uh, did not uh, analyze enough customization and said uh, excluding any customization so if you exclude uh, customization you exclude the data issues then only item that you are upgrading is software configuration which is you click a few buttons uh, in Salesforce and upgrade the Fontiva version from previous version to the new version and you make some configuration uh, settings. That is a very uh, small amount of work. Uh, if you had a vanilla uh, setup, then other line items will not matter. But in most of the uh, cases, it is data driven garbage in garbage out so if your data is not transformed correctly uh, you will uh, the reports will stop 
working. Reports, interfaces, like Conga example is a great example. You upgrade uh, uh, from 19 or 18 to uh, spring 20, Kong, uh, invoices will not go out without uh, transforming data and without uh, fixing the interface for Conga. Uh, uh, Conga red line. I don't know which version the the person who asked question is using, but that interface needs to be uh, fixed. Uh, we we can go back to the slides. Uh, any other questions? Um. So let, let me uh, let, let me walk through what happens on the day of upgrade. Uh, it's a it's generally called go live date. Uh, some uh, some groups will call it production rollout date. When you fix the date, that date is when there will be some downtime expected. Not much, depending on how much planning has been done in advance for data transformation and the scripts are ready and tested. You will uh, create the change set. You will create the whole um, uh, process of upgrading. But uh, the question generally comes, is there a rollback plan? And when should you execute that rollback plan? And what in what conditions? Um, so rollback plan, uh, is necessary if you have uh, not done a lot of testing and except especially user acceptance testing rollback is not that easy because um, if you keep running the system in the new version for say seven days and after seven days you decide to roll back what will happen to the transactions that were uh, uh, placed in the system in those seven days. So rollback generally has to be done within the the two to four hour window. Uh, you test, do a smoke testing, and if something fails, you roll back. But if you move away from uh, you, your uh, window of opportunity to roll back, then the only option is keep going and keep fixing the issues. One client we uh, noticed they suffered from upgrade for a month because somebody without doing data transformation upgraded and nobody found out that there was an issue due to upgrade for a month. Now, both options are bad. Neither you can go back because otherwise you will lose data or you can you have to take uh, time to fix uh, all the issues due to um, the upgrade which was not planned. So that uh, production rollout or uh, rollback planning is very critical uh, to ensure if you are high volume or high transaction organization where you have a lot of members, this can even lead to people um, uh, giving leadership very hard time because they, uh, they, there are, they, it will become a very quick escalation in no time. Um, Production verification testing, PVT, we recommend there are two or three people scheduled to be available right after rollback, after rollout of or go live. Say 10 a.m., the system is scheduled to go live and it can delay by 30 minutes or whatever is the time, but there should be some people scheduled to be available from the business uh, membership team or otherwise to do production verification testing of critical revenue impacting scenarios. Uh, um, your refactoring of report can be done in sandbox and moved over through change set, or you can continue to work on those after going live, as long as you know exactly which reports those are. Um, integration testing and third party integration, depending on the function, or depending on the type of integration, you can uh, plan for those during upgrade or post upgrade. So um, with, with that, uh, I'll take another pause if there are questions. If not, I, I will very quickly in the interest of time, walk through uh, some considerations for Lightning Community um, upgrade as well. Any Anybody has any questions or comments? Actually, I'm actually very curious. Um, if you all can uh, raise your hand if you are still on Classic. 
Um, it'd, be, it'd be very interesting to see how many of you are still there. Okay. There's no shame in it. There's always reasons why, so don't be shy. Okay. So Rajiv, this will be a good one to go through then. Um, so Lightning community migration is very different from Lightning migration of your own Salesforce org. So who is impacted? Generally within Fontiva, you may have a community or member portal um, for your members available. This is different from the, your staff view. So Lightning migration, when you have thought about, I'm sure uh, you must be uh, switching back and forth between Lightning and Classic, but for member portal upgrade or Lightning community upgrade, it's a project that you should take on uh, at some point. It could be done at the same time when you're upgrading your releases or otherwise it's a different initiative altogether. Um, the exercise uh, is not that big a deal because generally data is not impacted in your Lightning community upgrade. What is most beneficial we have seen is Lightning components allow more flexibility in the UI. So you can take this opportunity to improve the user experience for your members to utilize member portal and other community functions that you may have in your org. Um, we, I, I, I will not go through all the different uh, uh, bullet points, but the critical ones are, it is important for you to involve users to get a sign off on the UI um, before you um, go on a path where user experience is gonna change slightly. So Lightning community uh, migration is a, is a really good opportunity for all of us to improve uh, user experience for either join renew process or your ability to streamline some of the uh, uh, functionality that members or partners were looking for. Uh, some organizations which are uh, federated system, they use uh, communities for even partners and affiliates. So you will have in that case, two different communities that you will have to uh, talk about. Um, uh, next slide, uh, we know. So though that was mostly the prepared section or prepared portion of my uh, presentation, I'll, this will be my last slide, so uh, please uh, let me know which other questions you may have. But uh, based on our experience across our Fontiva clientele, um, these are some of the usual issues I have seen when we take over project or even sometimes our own developers make mistakes. We are all human, but as long as there is a process to um, to ensure that we can cash them at the right point in time is where the planning and uh, leadership comes in. Um, we, we, it, it is the common uh, issue that I have seen. Data transformation uh, uh, costs are not part of the budget because um, it was not understood that there will be a need to uh, manage data. There will be a need to take care of deprecated fields and the new uh, objects which were introduced. It's not just about the software, it is the solution that you are upgrading, which includes data reports, interfaces, everything. Uh, so budget should be carefully um, uh, prepared. The next uh, issue uh, that uh, I have seen is any critical updates that you would like to do should be done before uh, sandbox refresh. If you are in the renewal cycle, let's do the renewals and then worry about the uh, upgrade. Freeze uh, regular updates, otherwise your cost will increase. So you will have to redo those updates in the upgraded system as well. Yeah. Links of the URL should be updated in any custom code. Uh, as well as in your website, because um, after upgrade, it is possible that your landing page pathway, especially in Lightning community case, could be changing. Um, PVT, which is uh, production verification testing, 
is a critical portion which uh, do not get sufficient um, importance from the uh, stakeholders um, because people feel it is developers responsibility or technology teams responsibility but um, in our experience, including very large organizations that we serve, we uh, set up bug fest or we set up um, uh, go live parties. But the objective of these um, sessions are two to four hours. Everybody do their best to ensure that the critical functions that come under their departments are tested in the production system. And never uh, a bad idea to have it documented rollback plan and a schedule and authority level. If uh, this system has to be rolled back, who is calling that shot? Who is saying that, yes, we have sufficient issues or we don't have sufficient issues, let's keep going and fix those issues. It really is scenario driven. Um, there, there are more uh, common issues uh, we can go over, but uh, that concludes my prepared section of the uh, presentation with your checklist for Fontiva upgrade. Uh, any questions, comments, uh, we, we can, uh, I, I do not have any end time today. Uh, there's no meeting is scheduled at two. So if you have time, you have questions, we are here to help. Now, Rajiv, in terms of where do you, um, in terms of coordinating with other departments on this upgrade, um, it, do you find that the departments are saying um, that they're not wanting change and, you know, let's just stick with what we have, let's not, let's not change anything, let's not rock the boat, and maybe the IT departments are, you know, their hands are a little bit tied. Do you find any of that happening with any of our, anyone in our portfolio? Uh, I have not, uh, only question always come, boils down to budget. I have not heard any other resistance from any business user because every version of the software is generally better than the previous version. And with the technology improvement, uh, I recently bought iPhone 12 and my experience with 12, despite some issues, is much better, better processing, better software management, et cetera. So no user to, in today's age really um, uh, resist such an upgrade, but the question is how much does it cost? who will upgrade, who will be impacted, what is the benefit? So cost benefit analysis is where these uh, answers uh, come from. Um, in, the, in the current situation with Spring 20, there is a pending Fontiva upgrade or Fontiva payments uh, that will automatically pay for all the expenses in upgrade. Because uh, if you are processing a lot of money through credit cards, uh, Fontiva's uh, proposed costs are lower than what you may be paying. And that saving is, uh, is not insignificant. Now, Rajiv, in terms of, um you know, someone still hesitating to um, hesitating to want to do the upgrade and for whatever reasons, whether it's budget, um, their system is very complex, but um, is there a point where everyone has to be upgraded or the system won't be uh, serviced as well? Like what are some of the, what are the, some of the concerns here? Are we working with the timeline um, that we, we need to be aware about saying that we have to have the upgrade done by a certain time. I think uh, 18 will come to a point in the, in the near future where Fontiva will not support it. So what that means, let's go back to that uh, um, Salesforce uh, version slide. So if you were on 18 and Fontiva says that Fontiva is not able to support 18, what that means is if Salesforce comes back next year with a material change in the way they handle any objects or contacts or 
opportunities or transaction just like a few months back a few weeks back there was a change in the way they were handling guest profile and every version every customer had to be uh, had to make changes to process payments from guest profiles so similar changes could come through salesforce which nobody will have any option because salesforce pushes the these releases without you noticing it and without your you, no nobody has any control when salesforce says on 17th of october you will be upgraded for these critical security patches that's what happens now if your fontiva version is not the supported version then there's nobody who is maintaining that code so i don't believe that time is uh, has been announced but uh, I, I think there will be a point in time when Fontiva will say they cannot uh, support 18 because they are no longer supporting any release prior to 18. And that's why it's not mentioned in this slide either. And so what that means to the organization is that if it's not supported, that they're going to have things that are not working within the system uh, that ultimately impact their their members that's and right. member experience. It, it, it is unpredictable. Um, Salesforce may or may not uh, do anything uh, to the system and there, there's no change. It can keep working forever. But if there is a problem, there's no, no, no real option at that point. Uh, but that question, uh, I think, is beyond my pay grade on when Fontiva will say, um, that it is an unsupported version, but I, I do know that the previous versions prior to 18 are not supported at this point. Okay, so it's important to, to get on a path and think about how to get there. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Rajiv, is there any last words of wisdom you would like to share with us? Um, I'm very happy to, uh, if anybody has a specific questions about their org, happy to set up uh, uh, time with everyone individually one-on-one -on -one. Um, because we are uh, vested in Fontiva's uh, clientele. We today, my team has more developers outside and outside Fontiva than any other company has. We are growing, um, we are, uh, training another 20 people in our team for Fontiva. So if you need help, we have capacity. Yeah, the end, and the end of the year is a good time of year to get some of that work done. You probably don't have as many users interfacing with your system. And uh, it's uh, maybe you can think a little bit uh, straighter at this time of year. Thank you everyone for joining us. This has been a webinar about Fontiva's upgrade. We'll provide you with the recording the slides and the checklist out to you. So hopefully those will be resources that you can use. Um, and also if you would like to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, again, like as Rajiv said, we're happy to do that um, just to help kind of give you some guidance and some insight into how we can get you upgraded easily and stress-free is what we're all about. Uh, have a great holiday and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.